Welcome back to the show. We thank you for joining us. And now we're going to see Guy Mezgo take on Yuki Kondo for the King of Pancras. And Josh, very hard to believe that Yuki Kondo, just 23 years old, uh, at this point in his career, he's already accomplished more than a lot of other fighters do in their entire career. A real rising star, Yuki Kondo here, taking on the, the veteran and Guy Mezger. I guess though, even at 23 years old, with the amount of matches under his belt, Kondo can really be considered a veteran as well. And as the protege of Masakatsu Funaki, uh, sort of a Shamrock Funaki uh, matchup, and as Shamrock being the coach of Mezger and Funaki being the coach of uh, Kondo, Let's see if uh, Kondo has some, crypt uh, has some answer to that kryptonite of that side choke that Shamrock had for Funaki. Terrific analogies, Josh. And let's see who becomes the King of Pangras. Yuki Kondo versus Guy Metzger. There we see Yuki Kondo, a uh, prodigy in the sport, to say the least. And Josh, uh, you fought Yuki Kondo before, haven't you? You'd be correct in that, Rob. And he is one tough son of a gun. Kondo, 20 wins, 5 losses, 3 ties in his career. Also won the 1996 Neil Blood Tournament. And owns an incredible KO over Frank Shamrock, sending him out of the ring and onto the floor. And if you're a guy Mesger, what's your game plan to take this guy down? Well, both are, are well known for their striking as Guy the current champion comes to the ring, uh, but uh, I think it's really important that Guy use his physicality as the larger fighter within this bout to take the most out of uh, Kondo there. If he can use that physicality to wear him down, uh, you know, use that strength to his advantage to uh, push him around the ring. And, and uh, how is Yuki Kondo supposed to neutralize that physicality of Mezger? Speed and timing. That's what it's going to come down to. Guy Mezger has won eight of his last nine fights, and uh, he is a native of Texas. I'd say both men, techni technique-wise, being equal on the ground, Guy Mezger having a very uh, effective knee bar. He's won a lot of matches with it, but uh, I think the size and strength will be the factor in any groundwork. As we begin this fight. Isger with the low kick to the southpaw, Kondo. Palm strikes from each fighter. High kick by Kondo met with a right palm strike from Mesger. Mesger keeping the center of the ring. Coming forward with another big palm strike is Mesger. Kondo throwing Mesger off him. Inside low kick from Mesger. Returned by Kondo. Mesger needing to be wary of Kondo's very famous and effective jumping knee strike. And Kondo has to uh, always be cautious of Mesger's kicks. Uh, Guy Mesger, a world class kickboxer. As you speak. So, so responds Mesger with a nice lead leg high kick. And Middle another kick, one there. Strike. Mesger uh, landing, landing well early on. Kondo. And uh, Mesger, it looks like he wants no part of the clinch right now. Right. Kondo is, uh, is really getting a bit picked apart for right now. And Mesger timing Kondo's shots to land great counters and initiating some wonderful uh, lead kicks there. Is Mesger. Mesger keeping the center of the ring, trying to show his dominance as champion with another middle kick there. And Kondo has a little cut on his nose uh, as we see a little blood on his face. Mesger looking strong. Start out this bout. These two have fought before uh, twice and they've split one victory for each person. Side low kick responded with a left shote by Mesger. Mesger checking that low kick. Kondo's nose bleeding a little more. And now Mesger gets in the clinch, possibly looking to take Kondo down to the mat, and he does. Nice outside trip takedown by Mesger. Lands him in the half guard of Yuki Kondo as Kondo looking to get the full guard, but Mesger passing all the way through to the side position. 
as you see Mesger with the side control. Now Mesger locking up a cradle on Kondo, trying to hold position here. Knee on the belly by Mesger. As we see Guy Mesger with the cradle once again. Trying to establish mount is Mesger. Sliding that knee on the belly. Hondo continuing to readjust. And Mesger going for that arm of Kondo. Puts the knee back on the belly. Mesger staying in control on top where he would be wise to, to keep this position to continue to use that weight and size advantage to it the best of his ability and uh, make Kondo carry all that weight, tiring him out. Kondo here seems to be trying to relax, maybe take a breather underneath, but uh, I think if you're Kondo, what you want to do is, is try and create some, some motion, some energy by starting a scramble. At least in that, you won't have uh, the larger fighter in Mesger forcing his weight on top of you. As Mesger slides the knee on the chin. And Kondo in a very uncomfortable position trying to move his way out of it. Mesger being very methodical about his approach here. Mesger still has the side control. Moving around is Mesger. Five minutes passed and uh, Mesger still maintaining the top position, controlling well. As we move along in the fight, uh, Mesger still on top of Kondo and the ref breaks it and Yuki Kondo has to be happy to be on his back on his feet right now. One minute to go in this fight as they battle it out. Mesger another left tie kick. Kondo responds, both fighters starting to let those fists and legs go. Mesger charging with the body lock. And once again takes down Kondo. Looking very dominant is Mesger here. Really using his size to his advantage. Very smart strategy on the, on the, the uh, side of Mesger. Mesger putting that knee across the neck of Kondo. Landing a Shote, landing some punches to the body, getting active as there's barely but 10 seconds left coming up in this fight. Yuki Kondo uh, maybe trying to put something together at the last seconds, but Mezger not allowing him to do so. Looking to be a little too late. And it is a little too little too late as this fight has expired and Guy Mezger looks like should have uh, retained his belt. as we wait for the decision from the judges. This is like going the entire five uh, championship match as you might see in uh, one of the orga other organizations without getting a single break. And Mesger being successful in defending the King of Pancras belt in a very uh, controlling performance over Yuki Kondo. So Guy Mesger does retain his belt, uh, Yuki Kondo not able to become the King of Pancras right now, but he would do so later on in his career. So, Guy Mesger retaining his belt and Josh couldn't have ha happened to a uh, better person. Yeah, Guy Mesger is really a quality individual and I know this from uh, working with him recently in some aspects, but also uh, my trainer, Eric Paulson, has spent some time working with Guy Mesger and nothing but good things to say. All right, that, those are all the fights we have for today, but before we go, let's check out our move of the night. And it comes from the Masakatsu Funaki John Rankin fight. This is uh, just referred to sometime in Japan as a machine gun punch rush, punch rush from the mount as Funaki just unloads a full magazine into Rankin here, elbows, get him to let go, and then just starts beating in the punches. 
And it uh, looks like once Rankin's hands uh, are not up, he cannot defend himself, and the referee wisely jumps in to end the fight. Yeah, he, uh, that was more like a belt-fed uh, operation there from Funaki, just spraying and praying. Now, I want to ask you, Josh, uh, Masakatsu Funaki, Minoru Suzuki, in their prime, can they hang in the ring with the superstars of today, the uh, Mauricio Shogun Ruas, the Quinton Rampage Jacksons? Absolutely. And uh, those guys, it's hard. I keep mentioning this. Uh, guys like the, uh, Suzuki Funaki, Shamrock included, they had previous careers as professional wrestlers for many years, taking uh, all kinds of abuse and punishment. And uh, these are like their third and fourth careers sometimes by the time they, uh, they really started actively fighting. And I, for one, from training and, and, and watching some of this footage and, and being uh, one of the athletes in the sport nowadays, can, can see that they had the highest level of technique. They were great athletes, and by no means would they be anywhere but at the top if they were competing in their primes in this day and age. All right, that wraps up this week's show. Thank you for watching. I'm Rob Wood. Josh Barnett. Same time, same place, next week.